Welcome to my channel, The Binge Eating Therapist. I'm Sarah, former binge eater turned psychotherapist, and my mission is to use this space to bring content to you to help you understand your struggle with food and break free from binge eating. Now, I've been really excited about doing this video for you today. I came across a piece of research recently, which I thought was absolutely fascinating and that I thought would be really interesting to people who struggle with binge eating. Before I launch into that, I just want to quickly tell you that if you're watching this in real time, next Sunday, the 27th of February, Stephanie, Michelle and I were hosting a live event on Zoom. It would be lovely to have you join us. I will pop some details below in a link. Okay, make yourself comfortable and let's dive in. So this was a piece of research done at Yale and they recruited participants to come and consume a couple of milkshakes and have a look at how the different nutrition and energy content of the milkshakes affected them biologically through taking blood tests. So the participants attended the research center one week apart. They came twice and they drank two different milkshakes. On one of the milkshakes, this was the label that they saw. So this milkshake is described as indulgence, decadence you deserve. And the blurb says, indulge yourself with this rich and creamy blend of all our premium ingredients, sumptuously smooth ice cream, satin whole milk and sweet vanilla. It is heaven in a bottle and irresistibly gratifying. And then if we scoot across to the nutrition information, we can see that this milkshake is 620 calories, that it has 30 grams of fat and 18 grams of saturated fat. And when we look at the ingredients, we've got vanilla ice cream, cream, sugar, corn syrup, vanilla extract, mono and diglycerides, locust bean gum, etc, etc. In the experiment, the participants had to study this label before drinking the milkshake. So they studied this label and then it was about 40 minutes later that they consumed the milkshake. And then on a different occasion, this was the label they saw. Sensi Shake guilt-free satisfaction. Get sensible with the new light, healthy Scentsy Shake. It has all the taste without the guilt. No fat, no added sugar, and only 140 calories. Scentsy Shake is light and tasty enough to enjoy every day. We've all seen these kinds of labels. This is a typical diet product label. 0% fat, zero added sugar, only 140 calories. And if you look in the ingredients, we've got non-fat yogurt, all these low calorie types of foods. Now, I wouldn't be surprised at all if many of you are already way ahead of me. As you might have guessed, they were the same milkshake. So on both occasions, they drank exactly the same milkshake, which was a milkshake containing 380 calories. So on one occasion, they think they're consuming 620, but it's really 380. And on another occasion, they think they're consuming 140, but actually it's 380. And so when they arrived, they were given a blood catheter and they had their bloods drawn at a base level. And then they had their bloods drawn just as they're about to start consuming the milkshake. And then they have them drawn again afterwards. And what the researchers were actually measuring was their ghrelin levels. You may have heard of ghrelin, it's a hunger hormone and it's produced by the endocrine cells in the stomach. And so it's the stomach and the gut that are measuring how much energy you've consumed and when those are feeling empty, we tend to produce more ghrelin. If you are hungry and you haven't eaten in a while, your ghrelin levels are likely to be higher. And if you were to eat, say, a piece of fruit or something that doesn't have uh, an enormous amount of energy in it, your ghrelin levels, you would see them come down a bit. Whereas if you were to eat a large meal, you would see your ghrelin levels decline more steeply as you get less hungry. So really, if our biology was just measuring the amount of food that was coming in and how much energy it was and responding in accordance with just that, what we would see is their ghrelin levels would look exactly the same because the milkshake they drank was exactly the same on both occasions. But this is what actually happened. So what you are seeing is the darker line is the indulgent milkshake and the fainter line is the Scentsy shake. At the 20 minute mark, that's when they're first given the label and you can see that their ghrelin levels are at a pretty similar level. When they are expecting to consume a higher number of calories, their ghrelin level rises more than when they're expecting to ingest fewer calories. 
but then after ingesting the same amount of calories, we see their ghrelin levels decline more steeply when they believe they have consumed more calories compared to when they believe they consumed less calories than they actually did. When I was thinking about what the implications of this study was when we're talking about binge eating, one of the things that came to mind was thinking about how our biology might actually be responding to the anticipation of a binge, which is why if you've been anticipating a binge all afternoon, that sense of feeling it build, that may be why it's even harder to stop at that point just before the binge because your biology is already responding to what it is expecting to happen. And also when it comes to trying to change the way that you eat, the beliefs that you have about certain foods, maybe non-binge foods, are going to impact the way your biology actually responds to them. If you have beliefs about only this amount of food is going to satisfy me, your ghrelin levels may be responding to that belief. This is why what we believe matters. This is why I see this as psychological work, not to ignore the food at all, but the idea of just being able to change the food and not changing your beliefs, what you're expecting, what you're anticipating, may mean that you're working against your biology and that's harder than to make any kind of sustainable changes. This research probably says a lot about why diets don't work. Because if we're expecting to be eating in a deficit, even if we're not, like even if we've got it wrong in our minds, how much our body actually needs, our bodies may then be confused and responding in anticipation of what the mind is telling it is happening. This is the reason why I do videos like these. So if you want to dive a bit deeper into mindset and how to challenge some of your beliefs, you might want to check out some of the videos here. So thanks for watching. See you on the next video.